Hello, and welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this example, we will demonstrate the various angle controls available in the Structured Solver. The settings for the angle controls are similar for a domain or a block. The only difference is for a domain we're operating on edges or a block we're operating on faces. But the controls are very similar. So what do we mean by the boundary angle? Let's zoom in on our domain. And what we mean by the boundary angle is the angle between this boundary edge and the grid line coming out from it. Basically this angle in here. So to demonstrate this, let's select this domain and go into the elliptic solver by going to grid solve. So let's select the edge attributes tab and we can see what all the edge control settings are available. We have our boundary control function, spacing controls, angle controls, and boundary conditions. Today we're just going to focus on the angle controls. And you can see what our default settings are. For angle we have orthogonal. For blending we have a default exponential and a decay factor of 6. And we'll discuss the details of each of these settings as we go along. Now before we go into the various options, let's just leave everything at the default setting. Let's go back to our Solve tab and hit Run. Now we can see that the orthogonality has been enforced at our boundaries. You can see it on the outer boundary. And if we zoom in on the boundary layer, we can see that the orthogonality has been enforced here as well. Zoom back out. And when we look at our result, we may realize that we don't really want orthogonality on this outer boundary. This may be an overset grid, and we just want the grid lines to be smooth and continuous here at this outer boundary. So what we can do, let's go back to our Edge Attributes tab. This time I'm just going to select the outer boundary edge. And I'm going to come over to the Angle Controls and go to the drop-down. And we see we have four options here. We have Orthogonal, which we just demonstrated, Interpolate, Current, and Adjacent. I'm going to choose Current. I Apply, Solve, we'll reinitialize our domain. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you'll notice that the spacing control was enforced, but the angle didn't change. That's because we were using current. But if we zoom back in, we see that we're still getting the orthogonality here at the boundary. Now let's go back to the Edge Attributes tab, take a look at some of the other controls. Under Angle, we have Blending. And if we click the drop down, we see we have three options, Linear, Default Exponential, Custom Exponential. Well, what do we mean by Blending? Well, the Boundary Control function, in this case, Steger Sorensen, it's just a source term that's added to the Poisson equations to enforce the angle and spacing, and, and it's calculated at the boundary. Now, the source term is applied at each interior point, but its value is reduced or decayed as it moves away from the boundary edge. And this allows for a smooth transition between the boundary control functions and the interior control functions. And this is where the decay factor comes in. A decay factor of 6, the default, this means that the control function will be reduced exponentially to roughly 10% of its values, 6 cells out. To demonstrate this, let's go back to the Solve tab, and reinitialize our grid. And I'm going to turn the axis on and place it 6 cells out so we can watch how this point moves. We'll go ahead and run the solver. And you can see the orthogonality and how much the grid line has moved. Now if we go back to our edge attributes, and I go to the blending, we have three options. There's linear, default, exponential, and custom. So if I want to change this, I can go to custom, and now I'm going to just increase this value. And increasing this value will just cause the orthogonality constraint to move further out into the domain. So let's double it to 12. We'll click apply, solve. I'm going to move the axis over again so we can watch how that point moves and we'll run this one. See that the orthogonality now extends further out into the domain. The third option for blending is linear. If we go to the drop down, changes to linear, we see that we no longer have a decay factor, and that's because the boundary control function will just be linearly interpolated across the domain. 
Now, this strong control can cause some stability issues, so you may have to decrease the relaxation in the solver. Let's go back to solve. And we'll run this. And we can see how much further the orthogonality penetrates into the domain. Now let's look at another example. In this case, I have two domains that share a common edge. And for this case, I basically want to keep this lower domain the same, but I'd like to fix the spacing and slope discontinuity that I have along this shared boundary. So I'm going to select both domains. I'm going to go back into our grid solver, go to the Edge Attributes tab. Since I don't like the way this lower domain looks, I'll select those edges, and I'm going to set those angle control to current. And then I'm going to go back and select the edge for the upper domain. And I know this is the edge for the upper domain because the arrows are pointing into this domain. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to set the angle control to adjacent. And what that's going to do is it's going to come in and it's going to compute the angle based on the angle on the adjacent domain. So even though I really don't want this domain to change, I have to include it in the solver to be able to use the adjacent control. So let's apply that, go back to solve, run, and now you can see how the angle has been adjusted so that it matches the lower domain and we get a nice smooth continuous grid lines. So like in our previous example, I may not really want these outer boundaries to have orthogonality. So let's look at the other angle control. If I go back to edge attributes, I'm going to select these two edges and I'm going to the angle control and this time I'm going to set these to interpolate. And what that's going to do is it's going to look at the angle that the grid line makes at each edge and linearly interpolate in between to set the angles. So let's apply, go back to solve, run. Now you can see that the angle changes in a linear fashion as we move along the edge. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line down below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.